Hey everybody. So today we're going to spend a lot of time talking about JEPA models, which are Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture, which is created by Jan LeCun. Uh, and then if you're not familiar with JEPA as an architecture, we'll get into that. Um, and if you're looking at this architecture and you're familiar with Transformers architecture, it's completely different overall than Transformers, right? Uh, first of all, there's no sigmoid, there's no backpropagation, uh, except and, and no softmax is like the three major things. And then if you're not aware, there's like a big schism within uh, the AI community since about like the 1980s around those particular things. And all of those things are embedded and have become what is included in the Transformers architecture overall. I'm giving you like just a simple diagram and, and illustration of the Transformers architecture. You can see it's here. Uh, and you can see all throughout we have uh, softmax and sigmoid functions that are uh, included within these uh, within this equation, right? Um, and then within this architecture. And it's a lot more complex than the uh, architecture that we're looking at with the JEPA. Uh, you have, you know, a, 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 an embedded encoder and a decoder that's necessary, your multi-head attention, and lots of things, right? Um, and then this architecture is very simplistic overall. <laughs> really, it's uh, the bottom line is, is that you have uh, your encoder, and in that green box there in the center is like the main uh, it's like where everything occurs, right? And that's latent space. And then so it's important to me like to to point that out. Um, and it's a hidden latent space layer. Uh, people like when they're diagramming out these models and talking about these models, they'll often describe this as a process. That green that green box is a process. That green box is not a process. It's a space, right? Like it's a, like like uh, think of it like a box very specifically. Uh, and you can think of it very specifically like Schrodinger's box. Like that would be a perfect analogy to think of it as. And then so you have an encoder uh, and then you ask your values. And then so in this instance, you can see all the values that get passed. So uh, it's making observations uh, based off of uh, latent variables, right? Um, and then so uh, those all get passed into uh, this uh, magic box. The Schrodinger's box, and then you put the actual embeddings for the model in the box, right? Uh, and then, so rather than a cat, you're putting the embeddings in there, and then the model predicts future embeddings based off of uh, its prediction of the box and what is in the box. But no one, it's Schrodinger's box, right? So no one ever looks in the box. Like the model never cracks open the box. Um, that's the the black box aspect of it. Um, so the model never does itself and, and um, it's Schrodinger's box in a nutshell, right? It's a pretty cool architecture overall. And as you can see, it's a lot more simplistic. Um, and then so then transformers. And then so when we talk about and, and deal with these models, like I guess the, the next thing is, is like, um, are they actually viable, right? And then so uh, a lot of tests that people would want to do uh, around um, multi-agents, like agent architecture and agent agents and multi-agents are like the big thing right now, right? Um, and then so within JEPA models, kind of how that architecture works is it's a, a self-supervised uh, latent, it's self-supervised latent representation learning, right? Um, and then so uh, within that, it's like that model um, architecture within itself, it's a self-supervised learning process, which is not very specifically a reinforcement learning process. And then so uh, the question being like, could it be a reinforcement learning process? Because that would be um, inherently needed for agent models, right? And I'm not sure if this has been explored or not, um, but so we have explored it just to uh, dive into it and see the pros and cons of a JEPA model versus an LLM model. Uh, and our results are, are very good <laughs> compared to LM models. So there's definitely exploratory um, architecture here. And then as an end result, uh, I'll show you here at the end, we create like um, uh, the off the rails. <laughs> and uh, this is created by one of the researchers, Mujal Abs. shout out to Ben. Uh, and then he's created this model, which I'll show you at the end, which is going to blow <laughs> the JEPA and LM models uh, out of the water, right? It'll like uh, completely destroy any sort of agent framework that you've seen as far as benchmarks before. Uh, and we'll, I'll illustrate that for you at the end here. But 
most of this, I want to focus very specifically on JEPA agents, right? Um, and then so I'll dive into it. The very first thing that I do is try to test JEPA agents as the, the specific reinforcement learning agents. Um, and then so uh, I use Carpool, right, <laughs> as the, the simple test. And then so I create the JEPA agent. Um, and then within like um, uh, utilizing OpenAI Gem, it's just better within Colab to like block it, to use individual blocks um, as opposed to like having the code all in one block. So create the agents and then create the logic um, for the reinforcement learning and then the training step itself. And then we create the environment for the agent to operate within um, and then we uh, train it. Um, and then so like on Carpool, this isn't very good, honestly. <laughs> like um, uh, after a thousand epochs, the, the loss is like barely below one. So like, I mean, it, it, it like, uh, it would not score a high score on Carpool. Uh, so, as a um, like direct re like queue learning uh, style agent, I would say that um, our JEPA, at least from our testing here, is not not the best for for queue queue learning style, right? But what if we take um, multi agent architectures, uh, which aren't like a, it's not like playing a video game, right? It's like a completely different architecture and a completely different problem uh, optimization problem, which we, our assumption would be these models would do much better on it, and they do. And then so uh, within that, um, we're testing essentially, um, the first test is uh, for just like um, synthetic data generation, and then it's testing and uh, predicting the future latent states of um, data, right? I give it kind of like uh, agent test based on exactly what it is, like uh, what it, it, this model does. And then so it's uh, we have it predict um, stock market data um, as the, the first test here, and then this is just all you're going through um, all of the results uh, are all of the code and all of the math for it. Um, and then we can see, so we have uh, three agents in this prediction and they're measuring mean squared error, which you can see it goes down over time, right? The peaks are going down over time. Uh, it's interesting that it forms the wave, but um, we have uh, expected results, right? So the, the model is learning and reducing the error over time and then quite significantly uh, by the end of the testing and it's, it's scoring and, and benchmarking very well <laughs> on a time series prediction test, which makes sense because that's what these models are designed to do, right? So <laughs> it would be good that our test would um, score well on that. Um, and then so let's give it kind of like something more um, out there. Um, and then so in this instance, we change the, the data set uh, and then we add more like um, uh, visualizations and more tests uh, that we actually run on the model. Um, and then so uh, kind of more of a blend between like a queue learning and an actual and, and like the um, time series testing that we're doing. And then I run through here and on these benchmarks, these are the major benchmarks that I want to show you. Let me bring this up. So you can see mean squared error does get pretty high on, on some of these tests, right? Uh, but again, it does go down over time. And then uh, by the end, it, it gets within, uh, I call it acceptable range. And then um, as far as like um, agent tests, oh, so this is, uh, we um, had tested it on um, utilizing um, API, <laughs> making API calls. Um, and then so that's what this benchmark testing is. And like your general, like um, outside of the like recent Manus benchmarks, your general LLMs are scoring like in the mid fifties on these tests. And then so this model scoring between like fifties and, and mid fifties and sixties is, um, good, right? Like, uh, like this is good results compared to an average results overall. I would say compared to like the top LM models, um, and this is a very simplistic uh, representation of JEPA, right? So uh, this model competing with top LM models on on these benchmarks is is pretty good overall to me. Um, and then here you can see where it does bad, especially on this these uh, series type testings. Uh, it just does very bad. But the directional accuracy is, is okay overall. Like um, it's, you know, a good in the, the mid 60s to mid 50s. So in some of these testings, it, it could be an LLM model on these tests. Uh, and then surprisingly, like on this threshold accuracy, like <laughs> for some reason it does really well on this, this stock test, like, like surprisingly well. Um, so like, well, because it, it's um, testing, um, again, like future states, the future latent states. So um, what it's designed and, and kind of like born to do, but it does um, really well as an agent for f testing future latent states. So like um, financial industry, like I think would be really big if, if anyone in the financial industry is using LLM models for that type of uh, analysis. 
JPA models. Here you go. Like you can see, just from this initial test, I'll tell you that they'll score really well on it. <laughs> they'll do really well if that's what you want to use them for. And then so, uh, next test here is uh, the last test is <clears throat> going through uh, and then um, like trying to to optimize and and fully see exactly where that model scores with like again um, like. Um, agent-based work, so like a different API. Uh, and we can see it, it, it's scoring, again, okay. <laughs> like it, it scores um, acceptable for comparative to an LLM model. Um, and then so uh, as the last result here, I told you uh, we have an experiment to take it off of the rails. So yesterday I showed off the Zyra architecture and um, the Zyra models. And then so this is based off of the Zyra architecture, uh, and then this is the same exact test, right? This 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 test here, and then so I'll show the benchmarks here for this specific test. So this one is the JEPA model, is scoring uh, mid 60s, high 50s, low 50s. That's a bad score, 38 and 40. So uh, let's call it between 40 and 65, right? Um, on these tests, and, and then you can see here. Here's the 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 graphs and the benchmarks here. Now let's go through and look at the Zyra model, right? Um, and then so it's it's um, the it's uh, so um, it's the swarm based version of the Zyra models, um, and then uh, so it's using, utilizing resonant harmonics to to balance itself and to self regulate uh, and 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 self optimize, uh, and then we go through here, and then so. Um, 68 as the low, but we're getting 85, 94, 95, uh, 73, 85, 91, 92, 94, 96, and 96, and then 99, 98. So absolutely crushing, just, I mean, absolutely face crushing <laughs> the, the, the JEPA model, right? Uh, and, and no other way to put that. Um, and then so, and here you can go, these beautiful benchmarks. Uh, mean square, we, we, we want it to be low, right? So, uh, and then look, this is capping out at 35 there. Uh, and then these are all just flat zeros um, as far as that. So, uh, like, it's interesting, right? And then, so, to me, this is um, interesting overall because it's... Uh, this model does well on the the stock score as well, but the mean square error is higher here. So, so you would actually like if there's an instance where I would want to use the the JEPA architecture overall, it's um, what its job is designed to do, as opposed to the Zyra Swarm that we're looking at here. But it's uh, just showcasing and highlighting this overall uh, as like um, kind of. Proof, and I'll be doing this more and more of what we can do specifically at Moonshot Labs compared to other companies and other research institutions, right? Like uh, just flat out showing you 15% above anything else as far as benchmarks that you'll see with regards towards agents. No one else is going to show you agents with 95% plus accuracy currently running. Here it is. Um, with your own eyes, right? And, and uh, this framework is open source. I've made tons of videos on it. You can see it and validate these things for yourself. Uh, and if this is crazy to you, uh, then you're going to check out the next video because I'll show you something super crazy uh, that's even like more off the rails than this. And if you like this type of content, please like, subscribe. Thank you very much.